Hey friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling blessed and staying in God's presence. And if not, I hope you feel uplifted after today's video. If you're new here, welcome to His Princess Christian Community, where we read a chapter of the Bible every day and then discuss it afterwards and in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it opens the door for more people to join our community. And while you're at it, check the description box. We got a lot of great stuff in there. So today we're reading Psalms chapter 81, but before we get started, I wanted to say a prayer if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here on His Princess Christian Community. Thank you for opening the door for people to join our community, for connecting us and strengthening our bond. Thank you for opening our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your word. Thank you for your wisdom, understanding, and clarity as we seek to interpret your word. And thank you for the courage to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Psalms chapter 81. Sing praises to God, our strength. Sing to the God of Jacob. Sing, beat the tambourine, play the sweet lyra and the harp, blow the ram's horn at new moon, and again at full moon to call a festival, for this is required by the decrees of Israel. It is a regulation of the God of Jacob. He made it he made it a law for Israel when he attacked Egypt to set us free. I heard an unknown voice say, Now I will take the, the load from your shoulders. I will free your hands from their heavy tasks. You cried to me in trouble, and I saved you. I answered out of the thundercloud and tested your faith when there was no water at Meribah. Listen to me, O oh my people, while I give you stern warnings. O oh Israel, if you would only listen to me, you must never have a foreign god. You must not bow down before a false god. For it is I, the Lord your God, who rescued you from the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it with good things. But no, my people wouldn't listen. Israel did not want me around. So I let them follow their own stubborn desires, living according to their own ideas. Oh, that my people would listen to me. Oh, that Israel would follow me, walking in my paths. How quickly I would then subdue their enemies. How soon my hands would be upon their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him. They would be doomed forever. But I would feed you with the finest wheat. I would satisfy you with wild honey from the rock. Amen. So what did you think of Psalms chapter 81? I'm interested to hear about it in the comments below. Let me know your insights or your interpretation on the chapter. Maybe comment your favorite verse or just say hi and let us know that you're part of the community. You can even comment your favorite emoji. And if you need prayer, put that in the comments also and we can pray together. And definitely let us know if you've been blessed so we can rejoice with you. So Psalms 81 starts out with singing praises to God, and I just love that. I think that's how we should start our day. That's how we should end our day. That's how we should spend our day, is singing praises to God. And any reason or occasion that you can find to praise God, you should definitely use it. And as it says in here, the tambourine, the lyre, the harp, the ram's horn, instruments are always great. You know, music's great. Um, you know, listening to things on Spotify, just singing with your own voice, you know, in, you know, in the car, on the way to work, in the shower, um, you know, anything to just remind yourself and the enemy and obviously to honor God, just that you are so pleased to have him in your life and reigning over your existence. And um, verse eight or no, verse 6 was really important to me. It says, Now I will take the load from your shoulders. I will free your hands from their heavy tasks. And I just wrote beside it, I thank you, because I'm just so grateful that God is able to take my burdens from me. He's able to take the weight off my shoulders when I'm feeling overwhelmed, when the world is just too much for me or the chaos just gets to be too much. God steps in and he takes that load off of me so that I have no reason to worry or be concerned because he is guiding me and directing my path and I know that I will be fulfilling my purpose in him and I know the reward that is waiting for me so I can stay content um, looking forward to that future that he has laid out for me 
And it says, you have cried to me in trouble and I saved you. I answered out of the thunder crowd and tested your faith when there was no water at Meribah. So I like this that I tested your faith. So it's important then when we are in a season of drought um, to remain faithful to God regardless. Trust that he is working behind the scenes. He is preparing the way for us and just have faith in that and have faith in him. The same way that he has faith, he is always faithful to us. So when we call on him and we ask him for something, he always provides. So we, with his faithfulness, we need to return the favor and have faith in him. And it says, listen, O people, while I give this stern warning, um, you must never have a foreign God. And I thought that was really important just to remind myself to not have any idols in my life. And it's easy to not recognize that you have idols in your life. Like I didn't realize how much TV was becoming an idol or had become an idol. You know, whenever I needed to unwind or um, de-stress, I would just turn on the TV and zone out. Um, video games can be an idol, drugs, alcohol, food, all these things. And someone just recently um, made me aware that sometimes your pets can be an idol. Um, so we need to really um, take um, inventory and, and account of that and see if these are some of the things that we may, might be slaving to and we might be um, you know worshiping in some form or fashion um, so we just need to be mindful of that and maybe fast from certain things I know you can't fast from your pets but you can maybe think about the way that you are um, like interacting with them are they are you you know putting them before you before God you know in any situation um, TV you might want to fast from TV or limit yourself to how much TV that you're watching or you know different things like that video games same thing so we just want to make sure we're not a slave to anything and that we're not um, worshiping anything above God um, and so it's important for us to do that. We must not bow down before a false god. And for it is I, the Lord your God, who rescued you from the land of Egypt. So you just have to remember who's really saving you in all those situations. So maybe you zone out in front of the TV and it just takes the stress off your day. Um, but you need to remember that it's God that's providing you that relief and it's not the TV. Um, so we just need to keep that in mind. Um, and it says, open your mouth wide and I will fill it with good things. So, you know, we just need to to constantly fill ourselves with God's word and with the good news. We want to make sure that we're filling up on that and not just empty things that are on TV or, you know, in video games or drugs or alcohol or, you know, whatever it is that might be your vice or your go-to. We just want to make sure that we're making God our go-to and we're um, filling ourselves up with him so that there's no room for the enemy. And it says, um, so then it, it goes and says that it says, so let them follow their own stubborn desires and live according to their own ideas. And, you know, I've tried that <laughs> and it never worked out. It never left me satisfied or content. It always left me wanting more or just depressed or sad. And it was just kind of going through the motions, you know, of every day, get up, go to work, watch TV, go to sleep, get up, go to work, watch TV, go to sleep weekend. Okay. Get up, watch TV all day, then go to sleep. So, so, um, you know, it just became very mundane and very um, depressing. And, you know, that's not the way God, that's not the way God wants us to live. But he will allow us to live that way. He will let us um, follow our own stubborn desires until we realize that his desires are better than our desires. And it says, oh, that my people would listen to me. So I know God's just sitting up there like, man, I wish they would just listen to me. They could have so much of a better life. And sometimes now that I have found comfort in God and I have developed this relationship with him, I look at other people that I see that are lost and struggling. And I just pray that um, God would soften their hearts, that he would remove the veil from their eyes, that they would, you know, find God the way that I did and connect with him and and have that connection so that they could have that abundant life that light that life filled with joy and his peace and his comfort and you know I just want that because I know that God is saying the same thing he's looking at people and he's like man they could have so much of a better life even if nothing in their circumstance ever changed their life would be better because they would be filled with his peace they'd be filled with his comfort his joy things that they used to look and look at and complain about they would be grateful for their perspective on life would change and 
you know, I really think that that's the way God transforms us. And again, it doesn't happen overnight. It's something that you have to work on and you really have to develop it like any other muscle, your faith muscle, you have to develop it. And, um, you know, it's something that I'm still working on day to day, but every day gets better and every day gets easier. And, you know, I just think about that reward that I have at the end of this race. You know, if I just patiently endure and press on what God has waiting for me in my eternal life. And I want that for everyone else. And it says, but I would feed you with the finest wheat and I would satisfy you with the wild honey from the rock. And this is the thing, like God, having a relationship with God is so satisfying and so pleasing and so just overwhelmingly filled with joy and blessings and abundance. And it's what I want for everyone. And I'm grateful that you are here and you're spending this time with God, reading his word and getting closer to him. And, you know, I just pray that for everybody. And so, you know, today I pray that over all the people in your life that still haven't found found God, if we could just pray together on that and, you know, help try to draw them closer to God. So that's my interpretation of Psalms chapter 81. I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it. Leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope you stay blessed, stay in God's presence, and have a great rest of your day. I love you.